Senator Cantwell is here. We re welcome, Senator. <laughs> Thank it's you, your Mr. Time, Chairman. You're, you're, you're next to be recognized, but I think it's more, only appropriate that in the tradition of this committee, we honor you by singing you happy birthday. <laughs> happy, birthday <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Maria. <laughs> happy you. birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thought for a while there that maybe everybody on this committee would celebrate their birthday as we walked through health care reform, but <laughs> I'm glad it's only been three or four of us. So um, I do want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your hard work and diligence on this legislation. As I've said before, you are a distance runner, and uh, not only did this movement of this legislation to the floor show that you know how to get over the finish line, that uh, your persistence will help us continue to improve this bill. So I thank you for that. And I want to thank uh, your staff as well um, for their hard work and including many provisions that we fought for from the Northwest and also my staff member, Mark Iazzi, who's worked very hard on this, who I've tried to convince that um, I think he's going to go join the Peace Corps after this. But uh, passing memorable health care legislation is also a way to change uh, the direction of lives of many Americans and people. Um, so I hope he thinks about that. Mr. Chairman, there's been a lot lately in the newspaper um, that somehow there's surprising new information about the rising cost of health care or trying to paint this bill as a bill that is going to increase the cost of health care. The big secret around here that enough people don't dwell on is the fact that these costs are going to go up 7.98% a year in premiums if we do nothing. And while I want to work for further changes on the floor, more competition like the Leahy bill that allows cross-state uh, premiums without slashing the benefits, or looking at expanding public option, or looking at ways to expand the basic health plan provisions that I put into the bill, the bottom line is, is that this bill does make significant changes to the way we are going to control costs moving forward. For the first time in 2013, instead of seeing that number of increase go from 7.9% in premiums, we are going to see the premium increase be kept close to the rate of inflation. That is quite significant. For the first time in decades, instead of seeing premiums go through the roof, they will be kept more in line with the rate of inflation. Now the question for all of us is how do we improve on that? so that that trend continues beyond 2013 and that we continue to make the improvements to reduce costs. But this legislation with the Medicare reforms and one in every $5 is uh, Medicare, health care is Medicare spending. So we are going to have a 5% reduction in the first 10 years of this bill and a 15% reduction for every year of 15% savings every year in the second 10 years of this plan under Medicare. I can't emphasize enough how important that is in reducing the health care cost curve. There are long-term care reforms in here that I, that I have spoken to and sponsored. The fact that just deferring 5% of the American people off of nursing home care and into community-based care can save $10 billion in a 10-year window or the idea of the basic health plan that I know for sure in the state of Washington because of negotiation by the state has driven down the cost of health care by between 35 and 40 percent for the people in that plan. So these are the things that are in this proposal that are the start of reforms that can help us in saving health care costs for Americans. But the issue is that there is a lot of discussion by the insurance industry and I believe the insurance industry has a right to make a profit. And in fact, they've made a pretty good profit. They've made something like 428% increase in the last 10 years. And I know that they're used to making that profit. But there is nothing that says that that industry has to continue to make that level of profit because we haven't enforced the kind of competition that will help Americans receive affordable health care. The fact is, is that this industry profit has grown to $200 billion, $3.5 billion 
of which they have spent on lobbying members of Congress. In fact, according to a Vanity Fair article, they've spent $263 million in the first six months of this year. That is six lobbyists for every member of Congress and millions of dollars spent on lobbying them. So we can decide we're going to let the trend continue of increased premiums and let the industry have its way in fighting against this bill, or we can decide to do something to move ahead on those comprehensive reforms that I just discussed that are part of getting the cost down in the future. I think that we should move ahead. I know that there was a uh, resident of my state, Bo Melman in Spokane, Washington, who had a heart condition at 23 years old and could never get insurance. In fact, he ended up getting $893,000 in medical bills for his two heart surgeries taken care of by an organization called Project Access. But what's happened since he got his care is that Project Access, because it had both state and county funding and private sector nonprofit funding, they've all canceled their commitment to Project Access. My point is the safety net that we have looked for to help these people is falling apart. We've seen a 21% increase in the uninsured in Washington state. And so to stand here and do nothing is not an option. In fact, it reminds me of an ancient proverb that says, uh, do not stand still in a place of danger expecting miracles. Well, there is going to be no miracle if we stand here and do nothing. And I would like to see from the other side, I applaud the senator from Maine, but I'd like to see more comprehensive proposals from the other side on controlling the cost of health care. That's what this is all about. And so I know if we do nothing, we are going to have more Bo Melmans like the constituent in Spokane, Washington. We are going to see that doubling of Medicare. We are going to see that continued premium increase. And so by adopting these reforms today, we can at least put a down payment on the changes that we expect to see in controlling costs and get our colleagues on the floor to help us double down on cost containment and affordability so we can really give the American people the change that they deserve. Mr. Chairman, thank you, and, and thank you for honoring me on my birthday. You're very, very welcome. It's a big day for you. Many ways.